Right, doodle do. Now I'm not going to say probably anything about the process in this book because that really is for the people in Simply Stitch and other classes to know about. Um, but I will show you every page that I've done so far. Okay, so I'm stood behind the camera here, I'm reaching over. So, oh, didn't mean to do that. I started by doing the normal thing putting in inspirational images and working from those and that's the work of Maxine Bristow over there Google her, her work's amazing and here I've used some pictures of my own work that I've made like a mosaic out of and then done three little stitch studies there that were inspired by the other images on there and more Maxine Bristow's work it's the repetitiveness of Maxine Bristow's work that I like and I can't ever compare what I do to what she does because she's an absolute master and um, world renowned. But I like to think that she's got a love of the, comp the repetitive and I've got a love of the repetitive. So I'm, I've got a cup of coffee in my hand. I'm just going to have a drink. Very nice too. Um, so over here, repetitive stitching. Three tiny samples over there. Um, then I did a little sketch. Based on Maxine Bristol, it's a pouch, it's a hanging pouch with repetitive mark making done in pencil and then a couple of little enlarged bits there that highlight repetitive stitching and three more stitches there, stitch samples. Over there I was looking at words, I look at words a lot, um, I love words and that says, it's a definition of repetitive and it says repetitive, characterised by or given to unnecessary repetition, boring and dull. I disagree. It's not boring to me. Um, not at all. Um, so, you know, that's just one example of the words that I look at and, obvious, and occasionally disagree with the definition. But there you go. This is the work of Mary Kelly. She's amazing as well. She documented the work of her son, uh, sorry, the life of her son in a repetitive manner and then exhibited it in a repetitive uniform manner. And more embroidery over here. I'm going to have to stop talking soon because this could go on forever. And basically, just works on paper, looking at the domestic shape of a kitchen towel. That's what most of this is about in, my, in terms of what I've done. More kitchen towels that are sideways on. If I turn this book around though, it's too long the other way, you know what I mean? Uh, and you'll see all this in images on my blog, to be fair. But I will take more pictures for today. Uh, and then a different form of kitchen towel, hanging a different way. Oh, you saw that yesterday, the Spotty Dog page. I love this book, I wish I'd bought more than one. And when I was in America, I got it from Anthropology when I was in... Last time I was in Las Vegas, two years ago. And when I was in America this time, they didn't have any of these in anthropology, or I would have bought more, because I love to work in it. Um, more silk and paper combined, hand-bound buttonholes, um, paper manipulation techniques and stitching on paper. Um, this one is bullion knots stitched on cloth and then inserted in the page. Okay, I hope you can see that. You probably can get a sense of that. And if I pull in, I'm going to lose some of it, so I don't want to do that either. More introducing fastenings now. I'm a massive fan of hooks and eyes. I just love the harshness of them against the silk uh, and against the softness of cloth. So there's no paper here. It's just two embroidered pieces with hook and eye fastenings on. And then a paper piece with embroidered cloth in and hooks and eyes just to mimic fastening all that's to do with um, when I when I uh, work with fastenings and things um, they represent my desire to fasten my kids up to keep them safe even though they're both young adults now you, you know I mean you're your mothers if you're a mother you know even if I would imagine even when my kids are 50 if I'm still here I'm going to want to keep them safe and um, they'll always be my kids won't they this one, more paper, a tiny bit of stitch, and then embroidery put into that one with more stitch going on there. So it's getting quite full, this book. This is a sample I did for something else. I don't really like it. 
in terms of aesthetically. There's nothing wrong with it technically. The stitches are okay and everything, but it just doesn't appeal to me. And it's on pin-tucked fabric that I pin-tucked myself. But I didn't want to throw it away because I thought it was too valuable in terms of what I didn't like. So it's always good to have a point of reference of things that don't appeal to you. You know, so you can look at them and imagine why it didn't appeal to you. And who knows, in 12 months I might love it and use it on something else. So you know, I wasn't going to throw it away. Another bit of pin tuck silk with stitches, hand embroidery stitches. And then the most recent two pieces, and that's it. And I've got another piece that needs to go in here and um, that isn't finished yet. But I will just continue to add to this book as and when, but only ever with monochromatic things. Um, I'm working on another book at the moment with Simply Stitch 3 where there's colour. There's colour in that and it concerns kitchen towels etc. But it doesn't fit in here, it doesn't live in here, this is monochrome. So I'm doing a different book for that and I'm sure at some point you'll get to see it. And you will obviously, I'm sure, get to see little bits of it now and then on my blog. Uh, little bits of the artwork or whatever's going on with that. So I hope that was alright. Somebody said to me, it was Barbara, that she was stuck. Barbara's not in Simply Stitch 3. Um, I think it was a comment that she would look forward to this show and tell, a doodle do. Because even though I'm not telling you much in terms of technique and process, Barbara thought it might help her, it might spark something. So I hope it's done that for you. Um, <clears throat> I hope you've enjoyed that. And it passed a few minutes of your day.